Gods Abroad, a comedy and travel special. Laugh out loud in paradise. This is how it all started. We all needed a vacay. So when we were asked to do a comedy show, we came up with a bright idea. Let's go to my home country. Dominican Republic, a wondrous island in the heart of the Caribbean. This country is more than 500 years old. We have the first cathedral, the first university, the first hospital, and yes, even the first bar in the new world. So I convinced the girls. We packed our bathing suits, grabbed our sunscreens, and headed to Punta Cana. Though the island is filled with extraordinary natural wonders, the biggest wonder is why is everybody so happy here? Everybody that knows me knows that I would never get to the airport to pick up anyone on time. But at least I send the driver. She'll be here. She'll be here. Because she loves us. She She'll never ever leave us at the airport or we'll kill her on the spot. She going to get us all You gotta take this serious. These aquatic exercises are awesome. I don't need serious. it. Yeah, I'm need serious. I'm serious. We need gotta work it. off our abs for the show. I don't need them. Talk to Carb Monster over there. That's what they call exercises. I, I, I don't need the exercise. Oh my god. Okay, I give up on this one. Let's go. Let's do some push-ups and leg kicks. Okay. Yep. One, okay. two, three, four, five. And now kick your legs. legs. Kick your legs. Move over. Move over, kick your legs, kick, kick. While we were doing our aquatic exercises, Vicky noticed something curious and very cool. Move over, kick your legs, kick, 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 kick. Why am I the only one doing it? Two, three, come on. Come on, Vicky. That's Renee. That's Renee from the Connors. The oh, is it Renee or Sarah? I know it is. No. Tim. No. But yes, it is. Look at Tim. It's delicious. It's Tim. All the brands. Hey, 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 hey. Can we do a photo? I, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. But it's nice. It's really nice Renee. to meet you. Sorry, hey, wait. ladies. No. You got the wrong guy. Calm down, you got the wrong guy. Calm down. <laughs> nice to meet you. Is that really you? Show us the brush you work. Is. I'm sorry. Show the brush work on your left cheek. Prove it! How y'all doing today? Yes! My name is Renee Rosado. I'm going to be your host for Broads Abroad. Now, before we get the show started, I want to share a little something with you about me. So, my last name is Rosado. And uh, in Puerto Rico, where I'm from, it means pink or blush. And I'm really proud of my last name. I love my last name. My daddy gave me that last name. But in Mexico, it means ass rash. <laughs> That's right. Rosado means rash on your ass. <laughs> so. I've been dating this uh, Mexican nurse for about 10 years now. And everything was going real good. And a couple months ago, I was like, baby, you know what? I can't wait for you to take my name. I can't wait for your last name to be Rosado. And she goes, I ain't getting your last name. There's no way in hell I'm gonna take your last name. And I'm like, why not? I'm proud of my last name. Well, she told me, this is what she tells me. She says, there's no way in hell that for the rest of my life, I'm gonna be called Nurse 
ass rash. <laughs> the nerve. That being said, I'm a single man now. So give it up for everyone who's single up here. So being single, I start doing these, uh, these little, uh, the dating apps online, right? Everyone knows about Tinder. You know, you go online, you swipe right, swipe right. So I go on my first Tinder date, and it's going real good. I got the drinks flowing, I got the meal all set, and I got a really, really fucking hot woman right in front of me. And middle of the meal, she starts crying. And I don't know what to do. So I'm like, all right, just, I'm a good man. I just sit down and I listen to her. And she's telling me all these things, man. She's telling me about all the traumas that her ex-boyfriends have given her. <laughs> Oof. I'm like, all right, you know, just, uh, just hear her out. Looks like she's going through a lot in her life. So it's probably not the right time to say we're gonna split this bill. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a good man. So I decided to make sure I paid the entire bill on me. Now, that's a free meal. So I learned something that night. A man's got to do what a man's got to do. So now when I go on my Tinder dates, I'll make sure at mid-meal I'm the first one fucking crying. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's a free meal. It's a free meal. I saved a lot of money like that. <laughs> this is what I do. We set up the meal, make sure the drinks are there, meal's going good, a couple conversation, and I find the right time. I'm an actor, so I can cry on cue. <laughs> and I go, <laughs> can you believe <laughs> she didn't want to take my name? She didn't want to be Nurse Ash Rash? <laughs> I learned. Being a single man, I'm saving a lot of money, baby. All right, y'all start the show or what? All right. I want to welcome you all to the Barcelona Bavaro Grand Resort for Broads Abroad, baby. Give it up. Now tonight, we have an amazing group of comedians. We got Crystal Powell in the house. Give it up. Kiki Melendez in the house, give it up! And we got Vicky Barbalak in the house! Now first up, you've seen her in America's Got Talent and much more. Everybody give it up for Crystal Powell! A little bit about myself is I'm a girl from Texas. I'm a country girl, a black girl who had big dreams of being a comedian and you know what I made it happen. A very traumatic challenge that I went through and what actually helped me with my career was the passing of my mother. She had a massive heart attack at 56 and just it was actually on my 30th birthday and just passed away and I actually thought we were going to celebrate a party. I don't want to cry but you know that experience made me like we audition Kiki can tell you we audition every day and you're told no you're told you're not good enough you're not funny enough you're not thin enough you're not clear enough but after losing my mother and being able to pick myself up after that and with my laughter being able to help ever other people there's nothing that anyone can't tell me that'll crush me like that so one of the best experience about my childhood which I now realize is relaying over into comedy I used to get out of whoopings by making my mama laugh like when she get ready to hit me I start doing stuff to try to make her laugh to get her out of it and then when her girlfriends would come over for their little tea parties and the play spades because black people they play spades so it would be my bedtime but if I would start making them laugh I'd be the entertainment for the night I did an open mic. My first open mic, I got booked. And I said, uh-oh. And then the feeling that I get when I get off stage, that's, that's just that's the best feeling in the world. And that's how I knew that's what I was going to do. It's OK to ask for help. And what makes me push through? Hello, the good Lord. Prayer. I believe in God. I believe in family. So I get on my knees and pray. And I go surround myself with family. And I eat some cheese. Oh, what I knew about the D Dominican Republic was nothing until I got here. And when I got here, Lord, today, the beauty of this place, I'm here and getting to tell jokes 
and be around beautiful people. Look at this, a hammock. What I have learned in life to any and everyone that's watching, never give up. And it's okay to fall, we got a song. We fall down, but we get up. Laugh, because laughter heals, burn calories, and it make you feel better, and it's contagious. <laughs> I believe that I am a black Dominican. I really do. I really do. I'm happy to be over here. Because when I got here, ooh, the Dominican men, they were on me. Every time I walked, I felt like I had soundtracks playing. Bam, chicka, bam, chicka, bam, chicka, bam, chicka, bam, chicka, bam. Because they was hollering at me, oh, hola, mami. I said, hey, papi. You want me. He said, see. This is fun. Forty fun. And up here, I'm sweating. Ladies, you understand it. It's muy caliente. Get older, you start to sweat in places that you don't want nobody to know. Right now, I got sweat dripping all over my body. And y'all probably like, what is it? Y'all, y'all probably thinking y'all at a Whitney Houston, and I'm a Whitney Houston hologram. And I, uh, that's how bad I'm sweating. I hate it though, I hate it though. Men, y'all gotta stop being hard on us ladies. I'm gonna tell you right now, stop being hard on us ladies. Cause yes, when we get older, gravity happens, okay? It happens. The titties get long. If I take this bra off, it's just gonna be a blackout in here right now. The lights just gonna <laughs> The lights are going off. But fellas, we want you to match our energy. Cause sometimes, you know when you first had that toddler, you know when you first had your baby and you let them sleep in the bed, which today was about six, they was in the middle of you and your spouse. That's how our titties be, just laying on the bed in the middle, just in the middle between us. This is the thing, fellas. Match our energy. And I'm gonna explain to you what matching our energy means, okay? So the titty, the titty is down here, okay? Match our energy and kiss the titty down there where it's at, okay? <laughs> we don't need y'all to pick the titty back up <laughs> and put it back where it used to be. Cause now we know that you know that the titty ain't where it used to go. Okay, and ladies, don't frown on it, cause getting your nipple sucked and your toe sucked at the same damn time is kind of cool. <laughs> it is, I promise. And fellas, I don't know what y'all laughing for. I don't know, cause on women, our titties get long when we get old, but on the men, <laughs> balls get long. They get long. They be long. See, when you're young, see, he young. He young. He got them nice, tight. Yeah. When they young, they got them tight balls. They be tight, like little apricots. You can hear them when they walk like an old Clydesdale. <laughs> yeah, that's when they young. But when they old, it's an old man. Look at him. He shifted off his sack right when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is fun. I'm just saying, it's nothing wrong with getting older. It's nothing wrong, because guess what? If you don't get older, that means you died young. <laughs> Boo. So be okay with getting older. I see you got you a young one, papi. Ay, ay. I love it here. You know why I love it in the Dominican? Because y'all ain't got to deal with the mean ones. You know the mean ones that, that stormed the riot that was looking like like bad rabbits, like you know them, them, them rabbits that's gone mad. Nancy Pelosi, where is he? Killed, they was foaming at the mouth. Oh, my pants must die. I was like, damn, <laughs> y'all that mad? They was mad. 
I'm glad, I'm like Alicia, I'm glad Trump is out of there. Listen, <laughs> yes, y'all can clap. I'm glad Trump is out of there. And see, I'm from Texas. I live in LA, but I'm from Texas. And in Texas, oh, you know, they love Trump, yeah. You know, the boy, the men that wear the, the Wranglers and they have all their balls up in the front of their pants. That's what Texas is. So I had a show there and this big, tall, Caucasian white man, I was talking about Trump, and he ran up to the stage and he said, we dealt with Obama for eight years and you're gonna be able to deal with Trump. If you're not, I'm gonna shoot this place up. I said, sir, I don't have a problem with him. I just wanted to know who does his wigs, his hair, because Air Force One can be hovering over the top of him. <laughs> And it never moved. It never moved. I mean, it don't move nothing. That's all I wanted to know. Who does his hair? I'm glad Trump got out of there. I am. See y'all out here to marry people. Y'all on vacation. Ah, humping. Ah, 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 ah. Hump. Hump tonight. I don't know why people tell you not to talk about sex. If we didn't have sex, we wouldn't be here. Hump. You know what? You should have two things in your purse, especially if you're over 30. Some hand sanitizer and some aspirin cream. That's for all that shit you're going to do tonight that you like. This is dangerous, but it feels so good. And tomorrow you're going to wake up and look at your spouse and be like, whoo, man, what did you do to my back last night? I don't know. Pass me some of that aspirin cream and I'll see you again tonight. Because marriage, you know, I've been married for eight years and separated for seven. Because mm. <laughs> marriage is hard. But seriously, marriage is hard. And ladies, we set ourselves up. See, y'all matching, so I know y'all married. Anytime you matching with your spouse, y'all are married. Listen, it's hard. But ladies, I know we say all the stuff on the television. <laughs> you want to do that to your husband. <laughs> you be like, I'm going to do this every night. They expect you to keep that shit up, okay? I've done more fake sleeping as an adult since I've been married. <laughs> I promise you. My husband caught me at the refrigerator one night. One night I just started sleepwalking. <laughs> Remember when you was young, ladies? Your psycho would come. You'd be like, no, darn! I wanted to whore this weekend, no. You get older, that cycle comes. You be like, come on in, you got luggage? How long you wanna stay? Babe, Mother Nature's here, she gonna be here for a while. You gonna have to take the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage is hard, man. Marriage is real, real hard, but it's a good thing. I'm happy to see y'all, if you got kids, listen, take care of you. Take care of you first. Cause if you not happy, you can't make your kids happy. See what I'm saying? So you gotta put you first. Put yourself first. My kids, I don't care. I be like, fuck them, no. <laughs> fuck them kids, y'all enjoy yourself. Fuck them, hit them in they soft spot. <laughs> Bow, hit them. Cause them kids, they'll suck the life out of you. They will and you'll be like, oh, where did my soul go? It's running down the street playing hot cut scotch. <laughs> fuck them kids, like me, listen. My kids, whoo, they know it. And let me correct, you know, I have stepchildren because I know I don't look a day over 21. <laughs> whoo, that was just to get some wind on my ass while I'm playing. But I get it. But my kids' room, you know, it's not down the hallway, around the corner, up the stairwell, in the back, behind the game room. My kids' room is right there by mine, right there. So imagine you, Mr. Hulk, I want you to just bust your shirt open. I just want to see it. I'll pay you, senorita. I'm not being disrespectful, mommy. The kid's room ain't right there. So imagine you in there with that lovely senorita and you want to have some happy time. But you got to shush and whisper in your happy time. Hey, you want to do a little something? Oh, Yeah.
aneurysm trying to shush and shit. You better let that shit out when he tap you on your back, be like Tarzan. <laughs> oh shit, but it's funny. It's funny, it's hot. This is a beautiful thing. I'm happy to be here. I'm actually looking to go find Mr. Barcelo. They say he got a village over there that he lives on, the man that owns this resort. I actually want to go over there and see him because I got some two little britches that I need to wear. <laughs> oh, y'all see all that ass. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Little booties matter. Little booties matter. <laughs> don't discriminate. There we go. There we go. And see, it's bad when it's a black woman with a little booty. I'm already losing. I ain't got no big booty, and I can't twerk. But I'll step, I'll change the hell out of your ass. <laughs> sure will. <laughs> Man, I love life. This is a beautiful thing. I get to come over here and eat up all the food and shit, talk shit about Caucasian people, flirt with a couple of Dominican, yeah. I'd have me a good little chocolate baby. I just got back, like I said, we was separated for seven years. I just got back with my husband, so we tongue kissing again. Yeah, we, I, 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 I. we tongue kissing. But I will say this, I do not believe sex should be more than 30 minutes, sorry, I don't. All that shit y'all young people doing all night, all night, all night, all night, no. If you want to have sex with me for an hour, you better bring me a W-2. That's a shift. That's a shift. I need some paperwork to file, sir. I need a, I need a visa, sir. Over an hour? No, sir. Nope. I'm telling you that's all I do is fake sleep. Hey, Poppy, I'm going to tell you something. I don't think you know it, sir, but the whole cast, even Vicky, yeah, I'm throwing her under the bus. You know the sweatpants challenge, right? You know the sweatpants challenge? Yeah. Yeah, like it's a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, look at the look. The men mad. They like, what is she? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see it? Look, it's getting bigger. <laughs> yeah. Now everybody looking. The men saying, stop looking. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. Women don't care about this. <laughs> Women don't care about that. They don't care about. Yeah, they just care about the motion in the ocean and whether or not you're going to pay a bill or two. You know what I'm saying? You're going to pay that mortgage on time. That's what we care about. And I'm going to tell you something. I know, ladies, you want to wear the lingerie to bed and do the sexy things for your men. But, fellas, if you got kids with your woman, the way that you can just make her just be like, Ooh, she gonna call her girlfriends. She gonna call her girlfriends be like, girl, what was that trick you told me to do? Cause I'm gonna do it to not. I'm doing it to not. Let him take the trash out and bathe his own kids. How about that? Yeah. You be like, oh, he put John John down the bed? Yeah, it's different when you get older. But I'm cool. But I'm gonna forget y'all one little, one of Crystal's greatest hits before she get out of here. Don't I look like a Baywatch commercial? Suavemente, besame. Seven and a seven and a Santa. Seven and a seven and a seven. That's all I got. That's all I got. Besame. Seven and a seven and a Santa. Seven and a seven. Hey, I told y'all I'm an honorary Dominican in this bitch. We love you back, bitch! All right, let me tell you something. And y'all can cut this off of there because we don't, we don't seen it. But y'all ain't never seen a bitch before, so I'm giving you my shit. Bow! <laughs> See? Y'all got all different types. That's what I love about Dominican people. You can't tell. You can't tell, except for maybe you, sir. Yeah. You look real Caucasian-y. But it don't matter. If your people are nice to you, you know what, you should have your hand. If you're here with your spouse, put your hand on their thigh. Yeah, get in there, rub that. Yeah, that ain't your spouse. Get in there, daddy, she ain't gonna hit you, rub that. Life is short. Listen, she on her, she said, ah. 
She picked a sack up. This is what I'm saying, life is too short. Forgive people. Love on your man, love on your woman. Whoever, if you got a little blow up doll, love on her without busting her out and deflating her. But life is too short. But you do need diversity in your friend group. You need diversity. Cause see with me, even though I be saying I the mean ones, I got Caucasian friends. I got Asian friends. Stop to hate on Asians. I got Indian friends. I got my people, Keisha and them. Ooh, ooh. For those that y'all don't know, those are black girls. And you need all of them. But see, this is the thing. This is what I'm gonna tell y'all. It's what's about to happen. You can always tell by looking at somebody what they've been through, okay? You know back in the States, you know, they're killing black people left and right. You know what I'm saying? Y'all see that. I know y'all be like, so glad I don't live there. <laughs> but listen, you need different types of friends. And I'm going to tell you why. And I'm going to show you a way that you're going to be able to tell those different types of friends, okay? Like I said, they're killing everybody. Bow, bow. Soldier. They're killing everybody. <laughs> They're killing everybody over there. They was upset about everybody kneeling. They didn't want everybody kneeling during the Star Spangled Banner, right? I'm gonna be able to tell you the way you're gonna be able to tell the difference between Caucasian people and black people, okay? So, you know the Star Spangled Banner. Do y'all know the Star Spangled Banner? Y'all sing that shit. Sing it with me, y'all, as if I was a Caucasian named Sarah, okay? Y'all ready? Let's go. Oh, say can you see, sing, bitch, by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming. Give it up for yourselves, that was beautiful. You sang, motherfucker, give it up for yourself. And that was Sarah the Caucasian. How do you think that same song goes, my brother, when, when Keisha and them, when we get to singing, when we finally get our chance, when it's our time to shine, when it's our time for the mic. See, we've been oppressed huh, for so long. I won't preach because y'all don't want to hear that. But how do you think that same song goes when somebody that looks like me sings it? Me, 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 me. Oh, oh, say, can you see you hear the Star Spangled Banner, close your eyes and you're gonna be like, that's Keisha, that's my time, Dominican Republic, you guys are baby. <laughs> Most tourists flocked to Samana in the northeastern region of the island. It was the pirates of the 16th century's favorite hideout. Many famous treasures from this era were recently found here. In Las Terrenas, lots of ecotourism adventures to do, like hiking, kite surfing, bodyboarding, horseback riding on the offshore island of Cayo Levantado. Creating one of the main attractions besides horseback riding to the natural waterfalls known as Salto de Limon. 
Constanza. Nicknamed the Switzerland of the Caribbean due to its cold weather, Constanza sits on an elevation of more than 4,000 feet. It's the highest in the region, which makes it the coolest place to be. Vegetables, flowers, and strawberries are mainly grown here. A real departure from the beach, but a great experience for those that enjoy mountains, cozy cabins, and fireplaces. Jarabacoa is right smack in the middle of the island in a high elevation thanks to the central mountain range. With the most mild temperatures, Jarabacoa is often called the city of everlasting spring. You will really get in touch with nature in Jarabacoa. I've got to introduce her to Francesca Bonelli, one of Punta Cana's leading real estate agents. Yes. Crystal got a, got a win. She won. How much did you win? Girl, a million dollars. I'm a, a million, million dollars. dollars. Uh, uh, That's going to go a long way. A million, 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 million Dominican, yeah. honey. That is going to go a long way. So listen. So how so are you planning to invest that? I just want to buy me a home. And I, they told me that you could tell me. And I wanted to yeah, buy a celebrity. Yeah, tell us a little history about Punta Cana. Okay, okay, okay. This is the place to be. I mean, if you don't want to invest it right away, we could just rent you this beautiful house. That's where all the Kardashians stay. That's it's the just house I want. Ten thousand dollars a night. You could rent it for for oh, I got a million. month. I got a million. Yeah, it's just ten thousand dollars a night. I mean, that's it. I'm so it's nice fine for you. Crystal, buy one. Buy, buy, buy. I can buy it. I can buy it. I'm gonna invest. I can buy it. I can buy it. Because it's okay. So you could stay in a four bedroom. You can buy a four bedroom. It has a pool, golf field. That's what I need. Yes. I mean, okay, but if you want to go that high, what else do you have here, like for people that, you know what I'm saying, that might not be millionaires like Vicky and I? Is there a trailer park? Sorry, Vicky, but I have, we have to talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Yes. Never mind. Please, don't, don't be a okay. hater all sorry. your life, ma'am. I'm so oh, happy yes. for you. Thank you. I'm going to let you go house. Four Buy a house. You have a little room. Get so yourself this community, a house. Mm -hmm. So this is a community that's been around for 50 years. Okay. Oh, vintage. Love yes. it. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm here for it. Fun, fun fact, it was called Punta Borracho. Oh, Punta Borracho. Borracho. What is Borracho? Some will be living that on the Punta wasted. Borracho. What? <laughs> wasted. That means wasted. That means wasted? Point yes. of the wasted. Yeah. <laughs> point of the wasted? There was yes. nothing This beautiful here. place you was called Point of the Wasted. You would understand for rich people. Yes, of course. It's a, we have an international airport right in front of it. A private. Oh, fly, private. Oh! Oh! Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, she's a millionaire. She can afford yeah. it. Yeah, put a bottle. Crystal's tab, baby. I'll take care of it today. <laughs> yeah, Crystal, buy it. Yeah, I'm That's buying. That's something you never said before, baby. <laughs> Saying it now, over yeah. and over. Have you ever heard of Oscar de la Renta? Oscar de la Renta. Oscar de la Renta. That's how we say it. Oscar de la Renta? Yeah, that's how we say it. Yes, I have. Yes. Well, he used to be a property owner here. Ooh, and actually, he, actually, he was one of the ones that invested in the yes. airport with Julio Iglesias. Julio Iglesias. Oh, we having some rich neighbors, yes. baby. I can. I'm never going back to the states. I cannot wait. It's, There's it's a thing. They gonna think I'm a black Dominican. For real, I look just like them. They're yeah. gonna believe you. They're gonna believe you. They, they are. Money make you believe anything. Uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. A million. There's, There's a, a, million. a few other. A million. A million. A million. <laughs> Sorry. There's a few other neighbors. I, neighbors I can't tell you about. You I'll find out. out. They're gonna bring me housewarming gifts. So. By the way, now that you're rich, you can be anywhere in the world and connect here because this airport connects to over 45 cities and 26 different countries. Hello. Hello. So you can fly in Again. from See. everywhere. I want it all and I can afford it, so let's do this. Oh, Don't coral worry about stone them. by the yeah. pool, it's perfect. Oh yeah, that's what I want. And I have coral a question. Stone. So, you know, I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. So how, how did you get this million all of a sudden? Girl, Lucky Seven was on me and I won it at the casino, the Barcelona. In Vegas? No, right down the road, the Barcelona uh, Casino, right Grand there. Resort, wow. yes. It's not yes. It's not it's it's not I won it, yes. I won it, baby. I won, baby. Cha-ching! Woo! Boom! Boom. Yes. Ah. 
Yeah. It happened. I'm rich, we bitch. Saw it happened. Yeah. So why don't you call? You know what? Just you call. Give me a second. Just Hold a moment. Just Local sorry. currency is pesos. Yeah, but still. No, mine is a million. million. Oh, wow. Yeah, don't worry. Okay. Okay. That's One crazy. Second. That's Ooh, crazy. All, all my life I had she to put fight a dollar to prove in, I was a supposed million to be here. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Hello? Yes, this is Crystal Powell. Yeah. Uh-huh. I need, could you transfer me to the accounting department because I just need verification of the million dollars that I won last night. Yes, that was, yes. At the casino. At the casino, yeah. It was a million dollars. Just tell me your name. Just tell me your name. Yes, Crystal Powell won a million dollars. A million dollars. No, uh, uh no, nobody, what is, what do you mean peso? Nobody's. Okay, so I have a million pesos. So it's in pesos? Yeah, that's what they said. Oh. That's like eighteen thousand. No, no, no! It's a million. No. It's a million. No. Like a million, like six figures, no. like one, two, three, one, two, three, with the one in the front. No. In, in pesos. What does that mean? Why? What are you saying, ma'am? It's a different currency. It's that's like eighteen thousand dollars. I'm, I'm buying this home. Oh gosh, yes. Yeah, take that back. Hold on, because I don't think we have enough money. Take that, take that, take oh, that sorry. back. Yeah, take her wine too. How much is it? Next up is one of my dearest friends. She's an actress, producer, and she's known as Dominican from Bel Air. Everybody give it up for Kiki Melendez! I was born in Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic, but I was raised by a single mother in New York City. I was inspired by going to the comedy clubs in New York. Um, you know, someone I met, Joey Vega, said to me once, he's a very famous comic in New York, and he said to me, um, you are so funny and there's not that many women doing comedy, you should really try it. So I went to comedy school. <laughs> I used to go to school for everything. <laughs> I look at like people like Oprah Winfrey. She's really inspired me. I remember when I was a kid and I watched her on TV and I'm like, wow, she's amazing. I could be like her. I could, you know, I always wanted to be the Latina Oprah. <laughs> Lopra. <laughs> My children are half Scottish. They didn't speak a word of Spanish. They didn't know where their mother came from. And I thought this was a great opportunity for them to, to uh, learn the language and to learn the culture. And one of the things I wanted them to see firsthand is that in my country, okay, and I think most Caribbean countries, there's this happiness and joy with the people. What I have learned in life is not to have expectations. When you don't have expectations, everything seems three times as good as you thought it would be. Blanquitos, we call you Blanquitos, so if people are saying Blanquito around you, that means they're talking shit about you, just so you know. <laughs> Welcome to my country. But remember, it's not Punta Cana, it's Punta Cana, okay? Get it right, people. Stop drinking so many Mama Juanas out there. <laughs> you know, guys, I left this island when I was six years old. Do you believe it? Six years old. And people from LA are always going, where are you from? And I proudly say, I'm from the Dominican Republic. And they go, what part of Europe is that? <laughs> These Americans, they have no idea about geometry. <laughs> but literally, I always tell them, no, proudly I tell them, my country is off the coast of Spain. Because you know, all Latinos want to act like they're from Spain. <laughs> But I have to say, 
that I love being at the Barcelo Bavaro Grand Hotel because I've always had this fantasy to be able to say, free drinks on me. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> oh my God. Um, it's fun, you know, it's kind of fun to get out of our country, right? Like you're in the same place all the time. It's fun to travel. And I, I'm feeling so bad for the British. They haven't been able to travel for like over a year, right? And I'm like, oh my God, so now we could talk shit about them. There's none of them here. And then just yesterday, they decided to end social distancing. And I'm like, after thousands of years, you're gonna try that? <laughs> And I remember, oh my God, when I, when Obama was president, I felt so proud, I felt so at home. Because every time I looked at him, I said, that's a Dominican baseball player. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so funny, but you know, uh, I think that in America, immigration is breaking us apart. They actually asked in California, if illegal immigration is a problem, 20% said yes, and 80% said, de que coño tu me estás hablando? <laughs> and white people leave that border alone because that's where you run when you get in trouble and white men can't jump. <laughs> I, am, I am so, so happy because this is such a dream for me to bring all my friends in comedy down here, man. Can you imagine sharing the stage with all the greatest comedians in America and the greatest here. But listen guys, travel tips, travel tips. Listen, listen all you blanquitos, blanquitos, listen to me, travel tips, travel tips. <laughs> travel tips. In our country, pendejo means dumb ass. But in Puerto Rico, it means pubic hair. <laughs> Serious, I know you did it, what? Did you, don't call a Puerto Rican pendejo, man. Okay? And in Cuba, it means a dumbass with pubic hair. <laughs> let me ask you this, guys. Don't you love our country, but, but you go out to these restaurants and it takes forever to get your food, isn't it? Like, it takes so long. It's like they took a flight, a round-trip flight to Puerto Rico, right? <laughs> It's awesome, but the tourists here, listen, all I can tell you is just, just start drinking some Mama Juana, okay? And you'll be at the same pace as your waiters. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys know this, right? Your sex life has improved since you've been here, right? Right? Whose sex life has improved since they've been here? <laughs> Mama Juana is an aphrodisiac. It makes you horny. <laughs> So guys, everyone here, that's one, one of the things I love about my country is that in America we have everything. We have luxury, we have money, we're always stressing, we're always mad, we're always, you know, depressed. People are on pills, people are on drugs. In my country, people don't have a pot to piss in and they're so happy. They're so, there's no stress. There's no stress here, you know? Like the difference between an American woman, she stresses about her job, the money, the relationship, the kids, the this, the that, global change, Trump, Joe Biden. Here, Dominican women don't stress. There's only one thing they stress about, their fucking hair. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the salon for eight hours, put rollers on, take it off, then blow it out straight, then curl it with a curling iron, and then they wrap it around like a helmet, which is called a tubi. It's called a tubi, right? So I created a new term, tubi stress, that's all. And then they walk around with their tubi for an entire week, and you're like, why don't you just let down your hair, bitch, just let it down. And, then, and they're like, are you kidding? I'm not gonna pay again to get my hair done. Right? They can't go out if it's raining, they can't, they can't go to the gym, they can't sweat, they can't go to the beach. And then they take it down, right? They take it down, and it's like they're in a Vidal Sassoon commercial. May I get you some coffee? <laughs> I was Miss Puerto Plata, 19... <coughs> Bleep. I was in the Miss Puerto... 
I was in Miss Puerto Plata. Do you believe that? You are looking at a Miss Puerto Plata right now. Thank you, God. <laughs> but I blame my mother. You know, she always kept saying to work on my personality so I didn't win and look what the fuck I'm at right now. I'm a comedian. She told me to work on my personality. That sucks, right? <laughs> And I also blame my mother for my freaking name, okay? I, I live in LA, so most of the bank tellers are Filipino, right? And Kiki, right, I go there one day and I'm like, you know, and the Filipino banker's like, <laughs> and she's laughing at me. And I'm like, bitch, don't laugh at my balance. <laughs> and then she says, no, no, no. My name Kiki means vagina in my country. I'm like, are you <laughs> So I could do the Kiki monologues in the Philippines. And then in Spain, it means to whack off. So introducing whack off Melendez. And in West Hollywood, it means a threesome. Let's have a Kiki. That means a threesome. Let's have a Kiki. Have you heard that song? Well, that's what it means, a threesome. And I'm like, was my mother confusing marijuana with mama Juana? I don't get it. Ay, Dios mío. But anyway, guys, one of the things that is, how many women in the house, how many women in the house are single? Any single in the house? Yay, it's so hard, isn't it? Que duro, it's really, really, really difficult to be singles. Oh my God, I'm like, let me tell you, when I was single, okay, I used to go out to all the clubs trying to pick up gorgeous men, and they told me, I, go to, I used to go to psychics all the time, they go, go to Dominican Republic, those men will eat anything. <laughs> Oh, I know what you're thinking. God, she's, she looks just like J-Lo. I have a big ass and I can't sing. But honestly, I have a lot more shape than J-Lo. Look at this belly. You know, look at this. Look at, I have chichos everywhere, chichos. This is called chichos, everyone. And that's what you need, a woman with chichos, rolls of fat. That's what you need. Who's gonna save you in case of an emergency? Is a double zero skinny bitch gonna save you in case of a hurricane or a terrorist attack? Okay, come, touch this leg, babe, touch this leg. This leg is 100% cuchifrito, platano frito, queso frito. This leg. It'll save you and your entire family. And let me tell you guys, I, was not the type of woman that wanted to get married. I did not want to get married. I had too much fun, right? Look at me, I have so much personality. <laughs> and I met my Prince Charming. And I was like, God, I have to marry him now. And I was like, but I don't like him. He's not my type. He's Scottish. He's red, I'm brown, doesn't go together. He's cold and I'm hot. It just doesn't go well together. So I kept saying, you know what? No, really, thank you very much. You know, we don't have the same room temperature. It's like, no. And then he said to me, do you want to have kids? And this is a true story, people. This is a trauma that I will be writing in my autobiography. And I said, of course, I would love to have kids. And he says, come here, look in the mirror. And he goes, I'm your last chance. <laughs> That's how he proposed, people. Okay, but listen, he's Scottish, he wears a skirt, so I wear the pants in the house, right? <laughs> I spend like a Latina with a stimulus check. Okay, so this boob, I did it with the Trump stimulus check, and I'm so glad that Biden won, because now I can do this boob. <laughs> but you know, speaking of boobs, do you guys think that men treat you based on your boob size? If your boob size is a double A, you get to go to McDonald's. If you have a B cup, I promise you, you'll get Denny's. If you have a C, you'll make it to Red Lobster. And if you have a D, 
double D, you're gonna spend a week at the Barcelo Barbado Grand Resort. <laughs> But you know what? I've been hitting on men. I want to tell you, men, I feel sorry for men. Okay, first they have the smallest closet space. I mean, my husband has like two feet of closet space, okay? And my girlfriend the other day, she was like, oh my God, we had our success, sex, 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 and then he fell asleep. And I'm like, why are you whining? At least you had sex. <laughs> And I'm like, girl, please, at least you can say you knocked him out with your kiki. <laughs> Women complain so much. Oh, and then in school, right? You are all, you're all gonna agree, you're all gonna agree with me. In school, if somebody said your mama, you would fight them. You're like, what did you say? Did you just fucking say my mother? I will fucking you up. I will fucking you up. But let me tell you this, if somebody says your father is a womanizer, alcoholic, gambler, you go, when did you meet my father? When did you meet my dad? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? We are so bad. But anyway, getting back to my cheap husband, this man is so, so cheap that for Valentine's Day, he sends me a dozen roses via Instagram. <laughs> That's how cheap he is. So I sent him a through WhatsApp. <laughs> what do you expect me to do? <laughs> and you know, like, let me tell you, being married is difficult, right? Like, we went to, to Jumbo here, Jumbo. They call it Jumbo, okay, Jumbo. <laughs> And, he, and he's like, why are you buying so much makeup? And I'm like, because I need it to look beautiful. And look at you, you're buying a whole bunch of beer. Why are you buying so much beer? And he goes, because I need it so that you could look beautiful. <laughs> anyway, guys, but listen, I love being married. And then, you know, we ended up having twins. I have to say that I've learned a lot about being married, a lot, of, a lot of advice that I could give you. For example, spend every money he makes because if he, if he doesn't have a penny, every money he makes, he won't have money to go out with other women. Nobody wants a cheap <laughs> bastard. Who wants a cheap bastard? <laughs> and you know, there are times that I wake up in the morning and I go, I feel so empowered. I got a white man his green card. I'm a Dominican. <laughs> and after 18 years of marriage, oh my God, I know that I can, I am making him happy. I'm making him happy, you know why? Because the other, way I, the other day, the other day I heard him on the phone telling his friends, I just hope that you find somebody that loves you as much as Kiki loves herself. <laughs> and you know guys, some love advice. Always find a partner that has the same room temperature as you because fights over air conditioning and heating can destroy a marriage. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking of starting like a new dating service where we match you by your thermostat. <laughs> you see, God, you got me. She knows what I'm talking about, man. And if we could start like a dating service like that where it's like, what's your thermostat at? And then he says 74. And you're like, okay, I could do 74. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bitch, I'm never do 58. My kids were born like with green eyes and like strawberry blonde hair. And so I would take him to, they take them to the park in Los Angeles. I'd be strolling down the park and people would be like, oh my God, they're so beautiful. How long have you been with the family?
I had to go blonde. What else could I do? <laughs> and then trying to hire a maid in, in Bel Air, right? I put, in a, I put a sign in my little clubhouse, you know, looking for a maid, blah, blah, blah. The first candidate knocks on the door. I open the door and she goes, Dan, you beat me to it. My kids, like, everyone's like, how are your kids so well-behaved? Because they're usually well-behaved. How are your kids so well-behaved? <laughs> I studied cognitive development, and I am a clinical hypnotherapist. And people are like, so what do you do when they misbehave? I'm like, I beat the shit out of them. <laughs> and then one time I was so pissed, I was so pissed that I go, mira, hija de puta. I didn't think they'd know Spanish, right? They don't speak Spanish. I go, hija de puta. She goes, mom, doesn't that make you the puta? <laughs> I'm Kiki Melendez, I love you. The Dominican Republic's capital city, Santo Domingo, is also the most modern and dynamic metropolis in the Caribbean. Centuries-old architecture and the most modern high-rises merge seamlessly. Exploring the colonial city, the first European settlement of the Americas, and a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1990. Imagine walking down the first paved road of the Americas. La Romana has it all. Starting with Bayaide, a great urban beach to go boating and sailing. Snorkeling is year-round due to lessened water temperature and exotic creatures and scenery. It is where the famous Casa de Campo residential area is located, which also includes Altos de Chabón, modeled after Tuscany in the 16th century. Sculpted entirely of stone, a model 16th century Mediterranean village sits 300 feet above the Chabón River. The village opened in 1982 with Frank Sinatra performing live, where numerous world artists have since performed. Private beaches and yacht clubs with enchanting waters offering sports galore like parasailing. Famous for the only golf course in the Western Hemisphere that has 10 holes located directly on the ocean. This side of the world has an estimated 800 miles of coastline and every beach has a different feel with white sands, mountains, coastlines, and breathtaking sunsets. While hanging out at the beach, we ran into Victoria Yakimova, a local resident whose face appears on the Punta Cana Resort billboards. They're everywhere.
don't know what you're trying to protect, just, but like that. I'll help you, I'll help you, I'll help you. Alright, oh, good luck, ladies. Yeah. Thank that's, you so that's much. That's the right way. Alright, I'm nice good. Nice to meet you, ladies. Bon voyage! Good luck! Oh! Mine's just about to happen! Okay. Do you have this in an XL? My name is Vicky Barberlack and I'm a long way from my trailer park here in the Dominican Republic. I love it! I have two daughters. They're so beautiful. They look adopted. People never believe they're actually mine. And I'm married to my current and favorite husband, Lou Brockman, who's the piano player at the Comedy Store. My dad played pro football for the Steelers and uh, uh, he was hit in the head way too many times. And I worked for his carpet store for like 20 years before I started stand-up which was uh, in the days before Yelp, you know, when you could treat customers like you really wanted to. Yeah, we would be closed down now. When I was a little kid, I was always joking around. I had my own talk show in the garage. You know, I was like Johnny Carson. I was always having a blast, but I was super fat because I weighed like 220 when I was 12. So I was always making jokes about myself before the other kids could make a joke about me. I mean, I got the best joke out, I shut you down. I had such a crappy life before stand-up, I really did. I wasn't happy, I didn't think I ever would be happy. I thought I screwed up my life beyond repair. The only thing I thought I had going for me was my daughters, and um, which they are amazing. But stand-up just made me completely different. You have to get to know yourself as a stand-up, and I was the last person I ever wanted to know, but I, I, I I got to know myself and I realized I wasn't as horrible as I thought I was and making people laugh having people come up to me and say you made me feel different about myself you know you made me feel like if you could do this then I could do anything and it's it's given me such joy and like you know it's brought me from my trailer park to the Dominican I mean it's it's just been the best the best 20 years I ever I never could have dreamed of this time being so happy so when I started stand-up, I, I didn't mean to become a stand-up. I, I just was trying it out. And I was 40 years old, and I didn't realize I was too old. Anyway, I started it, and the very first time I got on stage and I got that laugh from the audience, I felt like people were just throwing diamonds and donuts right in my face. And I loved it so much, and then I just became addicted. Oh, look at Ralph Lauren. Oh, Ralph Lauren right here in the front row. He's looking at me like he never saw a trophy wife in Puta Conta before, baby. Oh, yeah. I love it here. Okay. No, yes, I love it here because this island is filled with men from all over the world. All over. Different colors, different sizes, different races, different accents. It's like, it gives a whole new meaning to the word continental breakfast. Mm. Yes. Right, ladies? Yes. Yes, I'm from San Diego. I'm so sick of our men. San Diego, I've been there 40 years. All we got is vegan surfers, right? Right, you know what I'm saying? Skinny little twigs, right? Every time a wind blows, they grab me. I'm not a buoy, bitch, move on. Right, no. The food here has been great, huh? Right, can you make cheese any more fattening? Yes, we fry it here. We fry cheese, it's so delicious, right? To, well, I, yeah, to do this show for you guys, I am triple spanked. <laughs> triple, that's why all these straps are up here. Triple spanked. And I, I can't even, even afford real spanks. I get mine at Walmart, I call them skanks. Yeah, I have no idea if they're gonna hold, right? I, you might be covered in lobster bisque and very concerned. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. 
I finally went to the doctor the other day. I went to the doctor, I was very concerned. I said, doctor, there is a spot between my breasts. What is it? He said, that's your belly button, Vicky. <laughs> yes, I'm just saying to the young ladies here tonight, listen, listen up, here's some advice. If I'd have known what I'd look like now at this age, I would have let a lot more men see me naked, okay? Yes, right, yes, yeah. When I, when I was young, I'm like, well, you can look, but you can't touch. But now I'm like, well, you can touch, but you better not look, okay? It's just, it's not gonna be good, right? But I'm holding on, I'm holding on. I'm holding, I'm clinging to the last, I'll do anything to look younger and tighter. Really, Ralph, I will. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. I will do any, I, I had my lips done. I mean, you can't tell because I'm wearing all these bangs, but. <laughs> right, okay, that was not on America's Got Talent. That was not allowed on America's Got Talent. That was a no, right? Right, right, ladies? I'm, yeah, PG, right? But I gotta say, girls, what kind of baby men are we raising? What kind of baby men? Did they, I mean, they used to be happy just to be in the temple of the hoo-ha, right? You're, you're dating some guy and he, he sees it down there and he goes, I don't like it. Well, turn off the light, asshole. Turn off the light, right? That is ridiculous. Do you think they would expect us to go to the surgeon? You know, and risk our life, have anesthesia. I mean, I can't even see it. I can't see it. It's bullshit, right? I mean, not that I'm against plastic surgeons. Is there anyone here? Ralph, are you, do you happen to be a plastic? Okay, well, I'm just saying, if I had any money, I would, I, would ha I, would have, I would have my tits pointed back up where they came from, right? And I would get big Angelina Jolie, I'll take your husband lips, right? Right, I would get lips like Roomba vacuums, right? I'll, I'll vacuum the, this shit tomorrow. That's what I would do. Oh, absolutely. So I was, I was hearing Kiki talking about immigration. Okay, I just, I mean, okay. I just want every, and this is not a political, I'm not a political comic, okay? I love everybody, I want us all to get along. But I was watching CNN the other, yeah, I was, don't look at me like that, Ralph. I was watching, I'll tell you, I was watching CNN because I was so hungover and I couldn't find the remote, okay? So I had to watch CNN. And while I'm watching, this banner ad comes on for Anastasia.com. Anyone know what that is? <laughs> Roman, you know what that is. <laughs> Anastasia.com is the website for the Eastern European women that want to come over to all of our countries and marry our men. Okay, ladies? <laughs> and we got to shut that shit down. Right? You know, when I, it is hard to get a guy to marry today, right? How long have you been married, Dayton Ralph there? Huh, are you guys Dayton? Six years you've been Dayton Ralph Loren. That's bullshit, right? Oh, you, you did marry him. You did marry her. You made her a good woman. How long did it take you to get Ralph? A year, well, look at those tits. Am I surprised? No, but I mean, I mean, even a year for you, you should have had him like three months, right? It's tough to get a guy to marry you. Back in my day, all you had to say was, I'm pregnant, okay, right, right? It, it might take a couple of Saturdays, but eventually that guy would show up and marry you, okay? Yeah, right? Now you could have like two or three kids with a guy. He's like, I don't know, that is a lot of responsibility. Yeah, right, that's bullshit. I don't even know why. Why do the men like the Eastern European women better? I've seen a lot of them walking around Punta Cana here. These beautiful, okay, they're skinny. I said it. That's right, the Eastern European women are skinny and shit, okay? But that's because they're from Eastern Europe and they're starving, okay? <laughs> right, you bring them over here. Yeah you, yeah, you bring them over here, you fix their teeth, okay? Right, and you give them a couple carbs, okay? And you show them where the Burger King is, they're gonna blow up like this, okay? Right? I, I mean it. I know it. I am 100% Ukrainian, bitch. This is what you're gonna get. And then I'm gonna ruin my parents, my grandparents, I'm gonna ruin your life. 
Shop local, marry local. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. The other thing is I, I do think that, you know, they, they think the Eastern European women are quiet, right? You know, and I have to say I'm 63 years old. And it took me forever to realize that men don't want to chat, okay? They don't want to chat. I'm writing a book. It's called Your Husband Hates the Sound of Your Voice, okay? They really don't want to talk, okay? And they think the Eastern, but the Eastern European women are going to learn English and they're going to be yappity yap 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 just like the rest of us and shit, right? I have a friend, Karen, very successful girl, very successful, right? But when it comes to men, so stupid. She will leave a voicemail on her husband's phone. Yeah, who would do that? No, you don't leave a voicemail on Ralph's phone. No, he doesn't listen when you're yelling in his face, right? Like he's gonna press a button to hear our shit, no. I've loved being here at the resort, right? It's so beautiful. I, right? I love the adults only areas the most, right? Absolutely. The adults only 21 in the pools, right? So, you know, I'm thinking topless. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I don't see a sign. It just says 21 and up, so I'm thinking topless, right? So I just, I had to do it. I'd never done it before. Yesterday, I, was, I got in the cabana, and, you know, I, I, went, I, went, I went to the store, and I bought a, a, a tankini, a tankini, a real tall tankini at the beach shop here. They call them tankinis because they could cover a tank. So I <laughs> got a, I got a tankini. Right, and then I put a bunch of glitter and shit on my titties, and then I jumped out of that gazebo, and the sun is glistening on me, and I felt younger and hotter than ever. It was just amazing, amazing, yes. I mean it, I mean, I'm walking along the pool, and my nipple sparks are flying. But it was fabulous, till this guy runs up to me, and he's like, ma'am, you're gonna have to put your bathing suit back on. He didn't even work here. He was just an asshole, okay? So after that, so I didn't feel comfortable going back to the pool. So I said to my current and favorite husband, Lou Brockman, right over there, hey, Lou. I said, I said, Lou, let's go into Santa Domingo. Because I heard they have a really cool adult store, adult toy store. Ralph, have you been? Yeah, it's called the Strip Factory, okay? Yeah, the Strip Factory. Uh, a few people know, that know me know that I was a stripper for years before I did stand-up. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, thank you. That, that's okay. My stripper name was Pillow. I, I, was, uh, I was actually very good. The last night I worked, really, Ralph, the last night I worked, I'm not joking, they brought me up on this stage, they made a big deal, and they retired my pole. They did. They had to. It was bent. It looked like a silly straw and stuff. But So we went to the strip factory. We walk in. I'm 63 years old, okay? And I have to say, it's so embarrassed, I had never seen a pair of edible panties in my life. I had never seen a pair of edible panties till Monday, I think. So this, this girl comes up to me and she's like, hi, I'm Boom Boom. I'm like, of course you are, you know. And she goes, would you like to see the edible panties, right? And I'm like, sure. And she takes me into a room full of edible panties. And I'm like, Boom Boom, how do they work? You know, because I'd never seen them before. And then I'm thinking to myself, you know, maybe it's like two o'clock, girls. You know, you get a snack attack, snack attack, right? And, you know, you're starving, you get the glycemic, sh and you're just shaking, right? And you're, you're looking through your purse for a nut or a mint or anything, shit like that, nothing, right? And then you remember, oh, my panties, right? It's disgusting, okay? I get that. It is disgusting. I'm like, boom, boom, no, I will eat anything. I'm not gonna do that. And she goes, well, no, they're, they're for him. They're for Lou. And Lou's like catatonic. You know, he's like, oh. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, boom, boom, I'll play. What kind of flavors you got? And she said, well, we have strawberry and peach and cherry. I'm like, that's it, boom, boom? Lou doesn't like that fruity shit, you know? Let's get real. You got some pizza panties? No. no, they don't. Maybe some roast beef panties? You know, I will tell you, Boom Boom, Lou loves pulled pork. He loves, you got any pulled pork panties? Give me a dozen pulled pork panties, he will tear my ass apart. Come on, bitch. 
This is all available to you in Santo Domingo. I mean, it's so worth the trip, okay? And then she goes, would you like to see the wall of weenies? Right? I'm mean, like, yes. I mean, you don't know in the morning to ask God for something, right? You don't know what to ask God for. I would never have known, ask God to show me a wall of weenies, right? <laughs> yes, you did, Douglas, but I never thought of it before, right? So I'm like, yes, show me the wall of weenies, boom, boom. And she, sh the wall of weenies is as big as this wall with Jesus Christ. Hello, the Lord is watching over us all. Oh, that's very good. Anyway. That's funny because he's looking down <laughs> on the strip factory. Anyway, um, so she's like, would you like to, so, yes, I want to see a wall of weenies. And I'm not kidding you, there's like, like 300 electronic, you know, boom booms. It's very intimidating, very, and I'm like, oh my God, boom boom. What is that red one in the middle covered with glass? And she's like, that's the fire extinguisher, ma'am. Yes, that was very embarrassing. Yes, it was very embarrassing. You know, if there was a trailer park here in the Dominican, I would move here, you know, because I love it that much. But I have to have a trailer. I'm very proud of the trailer lifestyle. I, I just, the only thing embarrassing about trailer parks is their names. Like, my last trailer park was Vista Manor. You know, like, we have manors in there. No, there's no manors in there. No, you know. But I just wish I could find a trailer park with a realistic name, something that says something about who we are. You know, like Misdemeanor Manor. You know, maybe Section 8 estates. <laughs> Los Blancos Trashos. I would love that. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, uh, yeah, we can go on forever here. I am going <laughs> to, I know it's late, but I got to say, I just want to share this with you. And this is just my own truth. I don't mean it, it means anything to any of you, okay? But it changed my life. One day, I don't know when, when it happened or why it happened. But one day, I have what I call my blowjob moment, okay? And it changed my life, all right? It changed my life. I mean, I used to try to diet. You know, I, I try to do anything to lose weight except exercising and cutting carbs, okay? And then one day, I had this realization, and it changed everything, okay? And I think the reason that it did, ladies, is the blowjob incorporates the three things the man's brain loves the very best, okay? Sex, doing jack shit nothing, and silence, okay? I mean it. It's absolutely changed my life. It absolutely has. I mean, I, I, I never get out of bed in the morning without the hot coffee with the cream preheated like I love it, okay? I mean, I haven't put the gas in my car in so long, I don't remember which side the shit goes in on. I am mean at that. I'm a size 18 princess. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the best part is, I have got it down to 47 seconds, Ralph. 47, right? I count it off. 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, boom! I almost always hit it, right? And, and the girls say to me, Vicky, what's your secret? It's very simple. It's very simple. All you have to do is focus. Keep your mind on the task at hand, okay? You can't be like, are those Kohl's coupons still good? No. You're going to be there forever. It just ruins everything. Right on. Have you ever been with a trailer girl before, Ralph? No. You'd remember, baby. It's trailer nasty, okay? First thing that happens, Ralph, you come over to my trailer. I shut the lights. I get it so dark I look just like her. Okay, baby. All right. <laughs> just I'm her twin, right? I'm going to throw you down on my bed. There's an old pepperoni pizza. I don't give a crap about that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm going I'm to love that. I'm going to lick that pepperoni off Ralph Lauren's butt. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Trailer nasty, right? So waste your time and money. Me and you, baby. We'll go down to 7-Eleven, okay? Or Jumbo, whatever the fuck we got around here. Whatever's rolling around that wheel. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> Trailer nasty, right? I'll admit this now. I actually developed a problem with my relationship with my vibrator. Girls, we don't talk about it much, but it happens. It happened to me, okay? I did, well, and I had to get professional help. And I, I did. I joined Vibrators Anonymous, okay? <laughs> and I'm, I really mean this, girls. Just for shits and giggles, you should find a VA meeting. I mean, you should go, okay? I'm serious. I'm, you'll thank me. People thank me all the time. Vicky was fucking hilarious, okay? I mean, if you think people at AA meetings have the shakes, uh-uh. <laughs> no. It's hysterical. My sponsor, Pat, 
She had a three-year affair with a jackhammer. Yes, she did. And she would say to me, Vicky, one day at a time. It's great. It's great. And I just, I just love you all. I want you all to know that you don't have to live in a trailer to live the trailer nasty lifestyle with me. I mean that. If, right on, right on, right on. I mean it. If you shop for your kids back to school clothes at the lost and found box at their school, you are living the trailer nasty lifestyle, okay? If you find the cheapest vodka you could possibly lay your hands on, the cheapest generic vodka you can find, and then you run that through a Brita filter four to six times, that stuff is smooth as glass, and you pour that into an empty gray goose bottle to share with your family and friends. Yeah, baby, then you are living the trailer nasty lifestyle, okay? <laughs> Girls, if you find yourself using your leftover roast beef to make your own edible panties, then you are living the trailer nasty lifestyle. You guys would be great for staying out all night. Thank you so much. Much love. Santiago de los Caballeros, named after the 30 Spanish aristocrats who followed Columbus and settled here in 1495. It was the country's first capital before a devastating earthquake in 1562. Today, the Dominican Republic's second largest city. It's affectionately dubbed Ciudad Corazón or the City of Heart. Puerto Plata, or Port of Silver, is the third largest city in the Dominican Republic. It is the trading port for the island. And if you've ever been on a cruise to the island, you will spend at least a day here. One of the first aerial tramways in the Caribbean, which goes up to 2,600 feet or 793 meters up to the Pico Isabel de Torres. It's known for its beautiful beaches and golf courses. Sosua Beach is often called the Malibu of the Caribbean for its mountainous beachfront. And if you want to hide from the world, you can go to the secluded island of Cayo Arena. Cabarete is famous for surfing and all water sports, as well as bar hopping.
Thank you.